intrigues me is Picard, remarkably analytical and dispassionate for a human. I understand why my father chose to mind meld with him. There's an almost Vulcan quality to the man. Picard, Jean-Luc, serial number SP-937-215. If ever there was a character that is the proto-human of Roddenberry's ideal, someone who was as close to what Gene thought humans should be, it is definitely this man. A person who believes in the unity of Starfleet and the ideals of the Federation, that would one day be our good captain of the USS Enterprise-D. Though, to the chagrin of Gene, he would be given some flaws that would make him more relatable and we'll discuss in the future. In the upcoming series, Star Trek Picard, we are told that Jean-Luc will be fundamentally changed. He will be something entirely different. In fact, we can see some of this in the most recent trailers as Picard appears to have given up on Starfleet. The one thing that he always clung to. That arguably, the thing that he treated like his own personal religion. This is a major shift in the character, so in order to best understand it, we have to break down who he was. Before we get into it, I'm going to give a shout out to the patron who funded all of this, and with that out of the way, let's just get into it. One of the many things people miss is that Picard was actually born in France. This could be confusing given his British accent. However, from dialogue, there is speculation here as we know that French is considered a dead language due to what we see in TNG's Code of Honor. This could indicate that during World War III or one of the many, many conflicts after, France was overrun and the culture changed as the population was displaced. Insert joke about Brexit, Germany, and France's leader Macron here. We would see an evolved human at their best in the childhood of Picard. His father had always intended for him to work in the vineyards and make wine, but Picard wanted more. He strived to be more than the sum of his parts. The future Locutus would be more interested in the stars and vessels, not helping teenagers make bad decisions when they're drinking things they shouldn't be. He also believed that he had to be the best of the best, that he had to go as far as he could, both academically as well as physically. The future trauma victim would become president of the school as well as valedictorian of his class. And with that resume, I know it's hard to believe that this man was never able to put a baby in another person or have a family. Until he committed murder, but we'll talk about that later. To much discord in the Picard household, John Luke would leave the family business and vineyard, enter into Starfleet, and reach for the stars. Most sources state that Jean-Luc's first attempt at the Academy would fail, but succeed on the second. I remain skeptical. I know this is something that Picard says to Wesley in TNG's Coming of Age, but I do wonder if it wasn't to make the boy feel better. It's not really a huge issue, but something that just feels dubious to me based on his history. I don't know. Per dialogue, Picard had a pretty tough time at the Academy, which is really hard to believe someone who focuses on nothing but his studies and athleticism would have issues connecting with people on a baser level. On that note, Picard would continue to excel at his studies, indeed winning many awards both athletically and academically. He would create a connection with a 200-year-old man by the name of Boothby and, for some reason, be proud of this fact. Also, we would again see him lying to young Wesley Crusher, intimating that he may have actually been with someone in an episode. Dubious given what we know of Picard. We don't have much more in regards to John Luke's time at the Academy. We do know that he enjoyed archaeology, but ultimately would choose command instead of becoming an archaeologist. In 2327, Picard was nearly killed at Starbase Earhart when he got into a brawl with a few Nausicans. According to Picard, he laughed loudly as he realized how fragile life really was at that moment. Which, just to stop here a moment. Yeah, definitely don't help a fellow Starfleet officer getting straight up murdered, guys. Just watch him die. You know, thanks for that. It's really showing the best of humanity there. Moving on, one of Picard's early assignments would apparently be on the USS Reliant, and I don't think it's that one. He would meet and become friends with a Lieutenant Nakamura, the Lieutenant ultimately becoming an Admiral. Picard would also make friends with Walker Kill and Jack Crusher. It would be at this time he additionally met Beverly Howard, in which he would impregnate her and send her future husband Jack on a mission to ensure that the man is killed to cover up what he had done. That's canon. That's in continuity and specifically happened. At some point, Picard would be assigned to the USS Stargazer as flight controller. He continued to rise through the ranks, ultimately becoming a Lieutenant Commander. During operations, at some point, the captain of the Stargazer is killed and Picard would take command and be able to save the ship. After this, Starfleet would be impressed and Picard becomes the captain of the Stargazer at some point. An interesting note, we don't actually know when he was promoted to captain. It is possible, if not likely, that Picard was a commander when he was put in charge of the Stargazer. 
As someone in charge of a vessel, he would still be called a captain. When he got the promotion to captain, we don't have the cannon just yet. The future destroyer of the Borg would also be a part of the Cardassian Wars, again commanding the Stargazer. In a very notable incident, he would lower his shields as a sign of good faith to try to barter for peace with the Cardassians. The Cardassian captain would fire on a ship, nearly killing everyone on board. It would be at this time that the captain comes up with the Picard maneuver and be granted the Grand Kite Order of Tactics for what he did. Though, to be fair, he was put on trial for losing the ship, which would cause some consternation with other Starfleet officers. While all of this is happening, there has been some sites and discussion that Picard met women in the background, but it wouldn't work out due to him being a coward. Again, I honestly find this to be Picard lying and the sites just creating fan fiction. As we can see through what is pure evidence, if there isn't a fiance or husband to kill due to a child that Picard has clearly put inside the woman, the future Admiral would not be interested. I mean, that's just science. All of this is clearly seen in 2353, when Picard would choose to save one life over another, killing the aforementioned Jack Crusher so that he wouldn't have any obstacle to Beverly. Though, Picard being Picard, his slow seduction of Beverly didn't see culmination until the finale episode, when he decided to finally be with her, in an alternate timeline. We've never seen it in the prime timeline, but mark my words, he is with her, he marries her, and she dies. I'm calling it for Star Trek Picard. Trust me on this one. In the end, everything has been leading to his command of the USS Enterprise D, things that would form the man and shape who and what he was. In the future, we'll be looking at specific episodes that definitively show who he is and should be watched before you go into the Picard show. Stay tuned and let me know. What do you think defined Picard and will be in the future Star Trek Picard show? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.